Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am doing a live stream here because I want to talk to you about an amazing candidate from my home state of Alabama. A lot of people don't know I'm from Alabama, but both my grandfathers uh, were from there. Well, actually, okay, let's not get te te technical. One of them was a colonel of Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, and the other room was in the defense uh, contractor world. And I was born there, and I have my roots there. And there's an amazing Senate candidate that I really want you guys to know about. Hopefully support because he's in a tight race, but it's winnable. He's going to win. We just need you guys to come out and do it. And here he is, Doug Jones, Senator Doug Jones. Hey, guys. How's everybody? Thank you so much for being here, Senator. And I specifically requested your son, Carson, because. <laughs> of course you did. Of course. He's, everybody I'm, does. <laughs> I mean, everybody stands him online. He is. You're a zookeeper. You're. <laughs> a symbol of coolness on the internet. And I that's, actually, that's a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. What do you, how do you feel about your internet celebrity, Carson? It's weird. Like it's wonderful <laughs> and it's amazing. It's, it's been really cool because I have been able to meet so many amazing people and, and be a part of so many really cool causes. Um, but it's, it's weird. And it's also weird when your dad makes fun of you for it as well. So. <laughs> Does he really? <laughs> He makes oh, fun yeah. of you, kind of sure. co-opting his senatorial campaign yeah. for your own Instagram. How yeah. dare he? <laughs> and then, yeah, so then he'll... Wait, 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 wait. How dare who? How dare me or how dare him? Qualify <laughs> <laughs> that there. Listen, it's fine. But, um, I mean, I, we'll talk about you a little bit, Doug. But, Carson, um, I just want to... I want you to tell them a little bit about yourself and how it is being the son of a Senate candidate right now. It must be a little crazy for you. It's um, a crazy. Um, so I, I'm, I'm in the middle. So I have an older sister and I have a younger brother. Mm -hmm. um, and both of them kind of prefer to be on the sidelines a little bit. Um, yeah. But I actually work at the zoo and I, I work with elephants. That's kind of my main gig. Um, <laughs> I do every day. So we've got three boys uh, that live here in Birmingham. We've got Bawagi and Gadzi and Ludi. Um, and they are my 20,000 pounds worth of elephant children. Um, oh. that, that's fun and, and exciting. Uh, <laughs> And then I also, I do a lot on Instagram, on social media. Um, I try and, you know, talk a lot about causes that I care about. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot right now with, with mental health as well as stuff around the election. So trying to really get people involved, get people engaged and make, make people understand that, you know, their voice and their vote really, really matters, especially right now. Just like yeah. you do. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, every little bit we, we do helps. And like I said, you know, in Alabama, especially for this, it is a very, uh, it's a state that has le leaned red a lot, and it seems like the Republican Party is really jumping in and just trying to own the state. And I think that's why I really want to work to uh, promote you, Doug, because I, I believe that not only have you done amazing stuff in the Senate since your election, Senator, but um, you have a lot to do. And I think that everyone just kind of assuming that um, the state's red is kind of pisses me off because I know we're an independent state. We, uh, there's a, a lot of things that people don't appreciate about, about Alabama. And um, I just really want to see you beat the machine because the machine is coming in and assuming stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know what? You, you use the right word. I, I, Alabama is not as red as people really think it is, but the Republicans have owned it. And mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big difference between having something completely red and having somebody own you like the way that they have. And that's partly Democrats' fault. I'll, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. be honest with you. Partly our fault for not really standing up for folks, not speaking uh, about who we are, what we've done for people over the years. So we kind of let them take ownership. And in 2017, when I got elected, that started to change. Mm -hmm. because We started going directly to people, talking to them about the kitchen table issues. People started listening. They responded in 2017. They've been responding for the two and a half, almost three years now that I've been in the Senate. I don't think they're going to respond in uh, on November the 3rd. I really believe that we are moving in the right direction and people are starting, as you said, uh, exercise that independence and say, nobody owns us. You got yeah, exactly. And I, I believe I've earned their votes. No, I, I mean, you are a native. You've done amazing work uh, as your t at your time before this in the legal world, to bringing justice to a lot of different um, situations and like this guy, the more I looked into him, I'm like, oh my God, this guy is not good. Like he doesn't do good with finances. He doesn't say anything. I, I guess like in a, in a rally the other day, all he talked about was like name dropping Trump and how he calls him yeah. on the phone. I'm like, where Actually, are the what? issues, man? Right. <laughs> well, and, and, and the thing that people are not seeing uh, because he doesn't speak to the media and doesn't do anything. 
he's either parroting what Trump says, you know, drain the swamp, build a wall, no amnesty, which are not his ideas. But yeah. what happens is if you really look through and dissect the things he has said, here's what this guy stands for. He's really an extreme guy. Yeah. He stands for, he, he supports that Alabama abortion law that banned all abortions without any exceptions. He supports that. He supports children's separation at the border and that really tough immigration thing. He's a climate denier. He, you know, he said, we can't change climate. Only God can change climate. So he doesn't believe in the science. He doesn't believe in anything. He was sympathetic to the birther movement and said, you know, Barack Obama ought to really show his birth certificate out there. That's the kind of dot guy we're dealing with. And he's masking all that by just throwing negative crap at me all the time. Yeah. People well, yeah. Did he ever show up for debate? Oh, no, yeah. hell no. I, we I, tried. <laughs> yeah, we, we, you know, I, look, we tried, but more importantly, students at Auburn University yeah. where he coached tried. Democr college Democrats and college Republicans had a, a forum, both of them. It was an amazing yeah. forum. He refused to show up for that. I was there, spent an hour with those kids, and I got to tell you, it was amazing. It really, you can go online for our Facebook account if you want to watch it. It's an hour long, but it was so good. And those kids were so smart, asked such great questions and no gotcha questions. Yeah. No gotcha questions. It was substantive. They wanted to know about issues. It was, I was so impressed. Yeah. It's a real generational thing. Yeah, go ahead. Really, really excited to like, for that to be kind of one of the last things that we do here at the end of this campaign cycle to really spend some time with with current voters and future Oops, voters and sorry. Really not just talking about what's going on, but talking about the future, which was really fun and really exciting. I accidentally um, highlighted a, a comment by clicking on it. Um, so I apologize for that, but we yeah. do have a lot of supporters in here for you. <laughs> uh, as a fellow Huntsvillian, thank you for doing this. So that's what I meant to highlight and it moved. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, I don't want to be negative, but I do like I don't. I want to I want to talk to you uh, about uh, a couple of issues with you, Senator, because obviously it's not about trashing the other guy. It's about what you are excited to do in the next six years, and hopefully there will be a mandate and you will be able to get stuff done. But I do want to emphasize that you are correct. This guy has a lot of radical viewpoints, but he also doesn't share them. He hasn't been challenged, and he's not a person who's shown any interest in politics before. So he's only going to toe the party line and vote down the line for Republicans when he gets to uh, Washington versus really represent what Alabama needs, you know? Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. He, Like I said, his only campaign ads have either been really false and lying ads about me mm -hmm. or just simply parroting something Donald Trump said. He's not given any indication of what he would do to help in this pandemic, help with health care, to, to get the you know, 400,000 people in Alabama that don't have health care, get them health care like I've been advocating for. He has no plan for that. No plan for jobs, no plan for veterans, no plan for the military. He's not even, he's just not talked about the issues. And the one or two times he's had uh, an opportunity, he mm -hmm. fumbled so bad. He, he doesn't yeah. know what the Voting Rights Act is. He doesn't, he really doesn't know the issues. And the sad thing, and you hit this, he really hasn't bothered to learn what the issues are. And that's a real sad state of affairs when you got somebody that is a nominee for the United States Senate and they don't even care about learning what the issues are. Yeah, it's it's sad because it's an opportunity to really create change for the better for your people, you know, your people in a sense, like your your state and the fact that he just kind of got handpicked by the RNC to be like, oh, it's Alabama. They're going to vote for a coach. It's very yeah. pa pandering. And that's what makes me upset. <laughs> and remember, it, remember, it's not really even his state. He only mm -hmm. moved here like 19 months ago to run for the Senate. What? He had, he had oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he lives yeah. in Florida. Yeah. What? After he, he coached Auburn for eight years. And after he <laughs> left Auburn in 2008, he yeah. moved to Texas, then to Cincinnati. And then he had a lake house here in Alabama for a while. But his home was, was in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. He voted in 2018 in Florida mm -hmm. and then moved here just to run for the U.S. Senate. About okay, that makes me even more mad. mad. <laughs> I Absolutely. love this comment. Jason says, I'm in Ohio, so I can't vote for you. And I thought I was done with my political donations for the year. One more couldn't hurt. Yeah, you're right. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. You, I mean, I really, I think you guys, small donations are really what's transforming Absolutely. this country. And it's not the millions of dollars in the big packs that the parties own like this 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 election might be 
it might be won by a couple thousand votes. It could be won by a couple thousand dollars. You do not know. And so that's what's exciting about um, Senator Jones here. Um, is there anything, I know you're really busy and you gotta go. Is there anything, Carson, you wanna talk about your Instagram a little bit before you go? <laughs> well, you can of course follow me if you want at the Dapper Zookeeper, but um, you the know, Zapper Zookeeper, really, I love it. <laughs> really, at, at the end of the day, like the, the next four days, we're we're all in here for dad. So um, we're, yeah. we're going to be talking a lot about you know making sure that people know where their polling place is, making sure they know what the hours are, all the requirements, all those things, so that they can have their vote cast. Um, we're going to try and do some more fundraising here at the end of the day because, yeah. um, you know, the, the money is important. Every dollar that we get up until Election Day really, really matters, especially in this state. Um, so anything that you can give, of course, we appreciate. But um, we're we're excited for Tuesday. We're optimistic about Tuesday. Um, and we're, we're really all in for that. We're, we're yeah. excited about the votes that are already cast. I don't know if you've seen this, yeah. Felicia, but right now they're estimating that, that we'll end up with three. 100,000 absentee ballots cast. That's Amazing. going to be over 10% of the electorate. And our tracking, polling, everything showing that those early votes are breaking for me over two to one. So yeah. we're pretty excited about that as well and getting souls to the polls on Tuesday. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And so if you guys are from Huntsville, make me proud. I was also in Birmingham. My dad went to uh, medical school there and I went to Mobile a lot uh, in, in my youth. So I feel really loyal to the state. And I know that there are a lot of differing opinions in that state, but at the end of the day, Alabama rules, and it's the best for the the best for the state is to elect you, Senator. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks a lot. Bye, Bye everybody. Guys. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks you so much. Bye. Bye.